And I'm going to go ahead and pull this up just like I do installing any other rig when I used to climb DRT all the time. So you can see it's heading up and we should flip it right into the crotch just like so. We got to bring this, manipulate this back down on this side. Friggin' little mosquitoes right right now. There, so it's down on this side. Now I'm gonna tie the rope on and pull the rope up. Kind of like a pile hitch. Make sure I get one good one here, here near the end. So I'll go ahead and pull this up and through. Is you have to figure out how much you need. So what I've figured is just about when it goes through, stand on your line, tie your alpine butterfly. Now I'll pull this down and that's gonna go up and it's gonna lock into the ring. So let's find out if I gave myself enough rope. Pretty sure I did. Now you can see that if you're going to do a lot of redirects, you'd want to leave more. But well, that's on a limb that's about the size of my wrist. But I think that's pretty sturdy. And it's cinched right off. Okay, this is just for a few guys that have asked me how I tie the XT Skleets VT with just a little twist at the end. So I install my new ZK2. I'm still using this shorter tether. I have one on the way that I'm going to try. Okay, so I'm going to reverse my hitch cord. You can see this one's the one that I climbed last time this side, so I'll reverse it. So I do three tight wraps. And then normally on a VT, you just hang this down in the back like this. But on an XT, what you do is you make a little twist in there. So if you look at it from the back, you can see how that is twisted around. So again, instead of drooping it over, you just do a little twist and then bring it around. And then you do your braids. It's important that you just let, excuse me, the bottom, the braids fall where they are. Don't try and twist them. Then you'll get a knot that's not running through. So just let them fall the way they want. And as you can see, it tends up nicely. I always give it a good lock test and I'll bounce it again when I'm on there. So that's what it looks like from the back. You can see it has that twist that goes around the last wrap and through this way. I like it a lot. It grabs reliably, never slip. going up to take a look at that. It's pretty small, the limb, but I think it's fine. Okay, so the whole purpose of doing this demo was to show you how this rig, you can see here, if I slack off of that, you can see the ring to ring on that limb. Kind of small, I probably should have moved it, but I'm gonna go through some redirects and just go back down again, so it's not a big deal. But uh, I have Alpine Butterfly backed up there, and then my main one up there, when I weight that, it pulls it right up tight, just like that. I'll talk a quick second about the ZK2. This is actually using it in the tree. You can see I'm using the Petzl Quick Draw tether. I like it. I like to have it uh, closer to me because I use the double beaner hitch climber rig. Now, if you just go one beaner and say a CT fix or a Petzl fix on here, then you lose that option to have that middle hole. So really you don't need a ton of room between your wrench and your hitch. Uh, that puts it up way up here where I don't like it and out of reach like because I can't grab above it. So this way I can always reach it and I got more than enough room to fit because all you have to do is fit your two or three fingers and thumb in here to get into your hitch. 
It's nice though too because you can grab it like this and lock this off and squeeze them together. So, you know, just gives that added little security. Plus the new one is nice and small and rounded. It's like a good little handle there. I use it quite a bit to pull myself around. Probably should have left a little more rope on this, on my climbing side, because I've got maybe about six feet left on the ground. And I've already gone through, this will be the second redirect, and I'll redirect down through there. So you can see how nice that tends and runs. It's very smooth on the pulley. And the XT, my hitch, you can see that uh, if I give it just a little bit, it'll move and she stops. Uh, everything's nice on this. I like the pulley in it. Big slick pin. The proto that I was running had it anyway. This cutout's nice because you can girth hitch through there. It's rope friendly. Uh, textile friendly, I should say. Now this here, the end of it's really, really small. It's only about eight millimeters apparently in between the sheaves at the end. Way smaller than the old one. That's nice because you can take out only one Allen screw and it'll swing open rather than taking the whole plate off. So that's good, but you can see that I have this bent up here, folded, <clears throat> my petzl, and this is the skinnier end. So Black Diamond makes some that are even about half the width up here that the petzl is. So I'm going to try some of those and see how they work. This works. I'll pull myself up here. This is where this thing shines. It's way smoother than the old one. Even if you're in a bad position, and you have to tend backwards, it just tends up super smooth. I like yeah. it. Well, that should be good. And this is going to be even better, better than the old one, because you just hold yourself, yourself in good position, and this thing tends. Smooth as Lou's bum, just like that. So you can see up there, I've got some good stuff going on through a bunch of redirects. A real shallow rope angle here, but I think I can get to this. Normally I'm doing this when it's a lot steeper than this, but that's okay. Because I did leave my quick link at home, I'm just going to do the knot. Like I said, I'm, I can just drop it and let it go, <clears throat> and it'll be good. So there it goes up through everything. Get out of the sun here. It's through, and here it comes. Just like that. So that, boys and girls, is how you install a ring-to-ring -ring friction saver and retrieve it. As far as I'm concerned, Chip and I were talking about this. <clears throat> friction saver rings should be steel. Aluminum wears out too fast. Sure, it dissipates heat a bit. In this situation, you're not there's nothing running through the rope, they're just there as an anchor point. But even DRT, the amount that you're going to save with, uh, with aluminum, it's not like it's a weight saving issue, doesn't matter, just the steel is more durable and it lasts longer. And in my opinion, steel is safer because you haven't heard of any steel rings breaking, and that's for sure. Another thing, Chip, way up there, my tip, it's about 65 feet probably. Judging by what my rope had, maybe 70, somewhere in 65, 70 feet. My hand through that, through this little window, hit it on the fifth throw. Not bad for me. Watching you do it and thinking, geez, that old lanky bugger can do it. Anyone can do it.
figure out how much rope you need and how you do that. So let's just say I'm pulling this down, that my throw line would be attached to that. It's just that's how it would normally work with a ring to ring friction saver. So you'd pull that down. And once that got all the way to the ground, I'd give myself maybe another five or six feet, maybe ten feet, depending on how much I was gonna do. Pull that down. And then at that point I would tie some alpine butterflies. It's just behind that. I'll do a third one or a second one. As a backup, I retied that alpine butterfly. So as you can see now, it's a, a more solid knot like the one below. <clears throat> so as you, you would pull this down until it snugs up, bang, it's nice and snug. And this butterfly knot is going to jam against the small ring, which will jam against the big ring. And that creates a rock solid, rock solid anchor point that'll move with you, but it's very static. And where you'd use this is if you can isolate a crotch really well or if you're not sure and you don't want to do a base tie, for example, in a removal, maybe you don't want to do the base tie or your tie in point might be a bit sketchy and you don't want to have the forces doubled because any time that you're doing a base tie, if you go up and over that crotch, then let's say I weigh 160 pounds, there's going to be 160 pounds on this side and 160 pounds on this. So lots of times you want that in a tip. So now at the end of the day, after you've gone through multiple redirects, which you can see in the video that I, the rest of the video I did in the tree, you come down to the ground, you pull on this end. So there's a couple ways you can do it. If you don't have any obstacles in the way, a simple, nice little overhand knot like this works great. So it will go through the big ring, it'll get stuck on the small ring, and it'll pull it out just like regular ring to ring removal. So what you can do is you can tie your throw line into this knot if you wanted to. And as you pull that through, that's going to allow you to control this all the way to the ground. Now there's situations where a knot like this might not be the best thing because it uh, they might get stuck in something. So then what I do, well, essentially we'll just do do like a prosec here. So there's one. We'll go around again. There's four. That should be enough for the most part. You can do one extra one if you want, but I really don't find that you need to. What I do is bring it down really close to the end. Right here. Give that a pull, let it bite on there. And then what you can do is you can put your throw line in here. And this is more rounded and streamlined, so it will go through the crotches better than a knot. Again, it gets pulled through the big ring, stuck in the small ring, and it pulls the entire thing to the ground. Now, if you have a throw line tied on here, it's going to pull this whole thing to the ground under control because you have the throw line. So basically that's the quick and dirty on how you